a virtual public meeting. Nebraska, and those that choose to visit Nebraska to see some of our iconic resources. The cultural treasure that we have there at Buffalo Bill is one that I enjoy personally. I look forward to every opportunity to be there and visit. And, uh, but I recognize that we can, we can do better. It's been interesting to me. I'm, I'm a, a lover of history, but over the years, I've seen it has been more and more challenging to bring, bring people into our historical parks. So part of this effort tonight is to not only revitalize and spur interest in, in history and park recreation, but to carry us forward into the future with some new attractions and new offerings to make it a truly a family-friendly, fun environment out there at Buffalo Bill State Historical Park and, and Recreation Area. We need your input to do that and to do it well. We need your vision because you know what? This is your park. It's not, it's not ours. We manage the parks. Uh, that's our role here. But the parks in Nebraska belong to the public, and that's why your input is so critical to us here. We want to see it through your eyes. We want to know what your experiences and your desires are so that we can do our job and do it well. We have great partnerships out there. We're going to call upon those partnerships to help carry us forward in this endeavor. And it's, it's a critical that that partnership remains strong. Uh, because we're going to need assistance, not only putting the plan together, but implementing that plan. The funding scenarios and, and everything that's going to play into uh, this matrix is, is critical for us. And how quick are we going to get it done? Well, let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and outrun our headlights. We're putting concepts together and ideas that uh, are going to be applied to a timeline. And we'll take a look at how we take those steps forward. Some things we may be able to do quickly. Some things we may need a little more time to do, a little fundraising effort or more input for the design of what is truly going to be uh, a great resource. You're going to see some beautiful imagery tonight. Some good concepts have been drafted by a great team that's been working on this already here tonight. And we haven't lost sight of the value of the historic nature of this facility. But what you'll see here tonight is an effort to blend excitement with history to come out with that iconic destination that's going to benefit not only us at Game and Parks, but you, the people that enjoy it, the community of North Platte, and all the partners that have a very vested interest here tonight. So have a good time with this. Please ask questions. Please provide good ideas. We're hungry for that. We're looking for that. And uh, we'll undertake this all together. So thanks for being a part of it here tonight. Skylar, back to you. Thank you, Jim, for that introduction. And one of the, uh, to help kick off tonight's meeting, I'd also like to introduce Adam Jones, who is the superintendent of the State Historical Park at Buffalo Bill, Bill, Buffalo Bill Ranch. Adam? All right, good evening. And as Skylar said, I am Adam Jones. <clears throat> I'm lucky enough to be the superintendent out here. I'm actually gonna echo a little bit of what Jim said. So Buffalo Bill Ranch and the Gammon Parks, <clears throat> we're in the process of looking at the future of the ranch and what we can offer our visitors. So although we already offer you know, many events and programs and a chance to join the past, as well as a quiet and comfortable camping experience, we're looking for way, at ways to enhance people's experience out here. So we feel that this is the proper time to look at this. Now, many things uh, could be quote unquote added to the ranch. Um, and that being said, the purpose of inviting you here tonight is to show you some of our concepts and you know, some of the direction we are taking and to give you a voice regarding this. So again, I, the ranch, and the rest of the game and parks, we thank you guys for taking the time to join us. And as Jim said, remember, this is your park, and our job is to look at the park through your eyes. Back to you, Skylar. Thank you, Adam, for that uh, introduction. Along with Adam and, and Jim providing us a welcome and, and kicking things off, we're going to have several agency staff members and our contracted consultants that will be presenting a lot of the information this evening. 
Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our presenters from Parks Division, uh, which includes Bob Hanover, our Assistant Division Administrator, who specifically specializes in all things state historical parks. Adam Jones, who we just heard of, uh, the Superintendent at Buffalo Bell Ranch Park, and Eric Riggins, who is the Regional Superintendent of all things in the Southwest, Southwest that are parks. I'd also like to introduce who's gonna to present tonight from planning and programming, Ms. Glenda Wood, who is our online public participation workshop content creator, and Matt Schaefer from Chalk Site Designs and Bill Stott from the Architectural Offices in Omaha, who are our contracted landscape and architectural design team. They will all be presenting the concepts this evening. And we also have several staff from our planning and programming division besides myself who are helping facilitate tonight's meeting. That includes our division administrator, Michelle Stryker, and assistant division administrator, Hannah Jones, and Aaron Johnson, our other recreation planner, who will be facilitating the polling questions. Michelle and Hannah will be moderating the chat this evening. Tonight, we will be presenting four concepts, um, as, as we mentioned earlier, or as Adam mentioned earlier, that is related to the master plan. These are essentially four major concepts or important concepts or areas that the Parks Division staff have identified that they would like the public input on for the plan. A presentation of each concept will allow you, the participants, to better understand the purpose and the thought processes of each concept and how it will benefit the park and its users into the future. Now, after each concept is presented, we will be asking a few questions to gain your input for each one of these concepts presented, which will be, uh, which will happen via the Zoom polling application. As a reminder, your input provided from these questions will be considered for the final development of the concepts and the final draft of the master plan. <clears throat> now, as we work into these four concepts, or the, the last segment of this evening will include a short tutorial on how to navigate the online workshop demonstration. Before we jump into these concepts, however, I, for those that may not be familiar or just to re-familiarize those that who are familiar with the state historical park, I uh, just wanna kind of give you an aerial view of the state historical park. And a couple of areas just to familiarize, we have the entrance down in the lower right-hand corner, if you can see my cursor. And then we have the parking lot area and green grass area, along with the, the bison pen and maintenance shed. And of course, the mansion and the mansion parking lot, ADA access, along with Scouts Rest Ranch Barn and the superintendent's quarters up in the Northwest, along with the maintenance shop and office, just to kind of give you a reference. And so the things that we will be focusing on, of course, is that is that main entrance area, um, the potential future visitor center, which will focus on this area, and then we'll walk through the overall master plan. The fourth concept uh, tonight will be uh, presented as a proposed future family-oriented heritage shooting sports complex that we are looking into as an agency to put on the western edge of the SRA and the eastern edge of the SHP. That's not really set up here, but we'll present that where and give you a little bit more geography of where that's gonna be on the landscape later in tonight's presentation. So our first concept will be introduced by Eric Riggins and presented by Matt Schaefer. Uh, this will emphasize on the conceptual designs and the layout of the entrance to the park. Eric? Thanks, Skylar. As uh, Skylar mentioned, uh, I'm Eric Riggins. I'm the uh, Southwest Regional Park Superintendent, Buffalo Bill Ranch uh, State Historical Park and State Recreation Area are our two park areas in my uh, supervised area. Um, I also was began my career with Nebraska Game and Parks as the uh, Assistant Superintendent back in 2000, and uh, later was the uh, lead superintendent and left that role in 2013. Um, so very familiar with the area and uh, I'd like to just share uh, kind of my thoughts with you on the, uh, the, the current entrance and, and what we could possibly 
due to that entrance way to make it a, a very uh, more friendly and inviting atmosphere for you. So uh, I wanna start by, by thanking each of you um, for your participation in this process. Uh, it's a very important process. And we need your input as everybody's mentioned. Um, you know, these park areas belong to you and we greatly appreciate and value your input as we, uh, as we go through this process. Um, Nebraska Game of Parks uh, always strives to, to provide a welcoming experience. And this begins at the entrance to any park area. Uh, those of you who are familiar with both Buffalo Bill Ranch uh, park areas most likely agree uh, that the current entrance to the state recreation area at the corner of Buffalo Bill Avenue and Scouts Rest Ranch Road can be very confusing for first time visitors. As visitors approach the end of Buffalo Bill Avenue, they have several options and not a lot of time to determine what is the best option they need to reach their, their desired destination. Uh, these options consist of one, turning 90 degrees right, heading east to the current concession operation, two, veer 45 degrees right, heading northeast towards the state recreation area and campground, or three, turn left 90 degrees and head west to the state historical park using Scouts Rest Ranch Road. To add to the confusion at that corner, uh, there's also a, a park driveway uh, that veers northwest to a park residence and a maintenance shop, as well as an entrance into the horse pasture if you continue straight north. So there are basically five options that every visitor um, has at that corner. Um, instant confusion for about every, every one of them. As a park superintendent, you know, for those 13 years, I lived in the residence near that intersection um, and witnessed that confusion daily. And in those 13 years and continuing today, have never found a solid solution to that confusion. Many times traffic does not realize that Buffalo Bill Avenue dead ends at that intersection and that the main through traffic route is that 90 degree left turn on the Scouts Restaurant Road. If traffic misses that turn, they're often traveling at a high rate of speed. And in 13 years, I believe I've had to replace sections of fence, gates, mailboxes, Etc. on an annual frequency. I'll uh, also share an example, you know, if you don't mind. Uh, I recall one morning uh, getting ready to send a boy off to school and suddenly hear a, a very loud noise outside. Uh, I look out the window and, and witness a fully loaded semi and trailer crashing through a steel pasture gate. Uh, shearing off fence post, uh, that steel gate goes flying and then also took out two overhead electrical lines uh, supplying electricity to that residence. Uh, this semi driver thought he was on Highway 83 and he had a full head of steam, uh, said he was, was traveling about 70 miles per hour when he reached that intersection. You know, this is an extreme example and one that hopefully we, we never happens again, um, but it's a situation that I, I always recall every time I, I approach that intersection. Um, adding signage helps, um, but too many signs also create hazards of stop traffic in the middle of an intersection uh, as they try to make sense of that signage. Uh, the current wooden archway installed by the concessionaire at that intersection uh, helps as well to gain attention of drivers, uh, slowing them down as they approach. But we believe that we can improve that entranceway, creating an inviting and safe main entrance, and we'd like your input. Our partnering uh, design consultants, uh, with guidance from our park staff, have developed some concept designs, uh, which we're going to share with you tonight. Um, we would like to present these to you at this time to garner any ideas and input that you have. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Matt, um, and he's going to uh, show you what he's been working on. Again, uh, thank you for your time uh, tonight to join us for this process, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Thanks. There we go. I was looking for the unmute button. And I'm really glad that you're all not here to see me because I picked this spot in my house because of the great light. But all of a sudden, as 5.30 hit, the sunlight is peeking through and um, getting bright spots. So luckily, you're not looking at me. You're looking at the screen. And what I, I have up is just an image. And I think images speak louder than, than words. The current entrance condition um, for the park where you have the wooden gates, which looks, 
it's nice, but it's not befitting of a state park system. And then you have the decision distance there where you're you're having to turn almost immediately and there's really no time to figure out where you need to go or where you want to go. So um, keep this image in your mind as we kind of go through the next um, few slides. Uh, but the, the solution that we kind of came up with, and this, these are just concepts, these are just ideas to help move the ball forward in terms of figuring out what the park actually needs. But the initial concept that we came up with as a team featured kind of a, um, well, let me step back and, and kind of reinforce the, some of the big objectives that we wanted to, to hit on. And, you know, the first and, and, and foremost, you know, we wanted to create an experience that's befitting of, of the park. Um, you know, this is actually a, a really, really important park. It has really important uh, historical aspects and really important um, natural resource aspects. And so what we as a design team move forward with was trying to find ways of elevating all of the elements so that when you enter the park, you know that this this is an important place. This this park has features that are important and everything is reinforcing that importance. Um, the second key is making sure that you know whatever we do, it feels like it, you know you're entering a game and park system. You know, we want to make sure that, you know, when you go in that you recognize immediately that you're part of this overall um, statewide system of, of parks and natural areas. And third, would, and, and I think one of the more important parts is, is finding ways of, of finding that sense of place and then reinforcing that sense of place through the elements. So making sure that, you know, you not only know that it's a game and park system, but that this is this is Buffalo Bills Park. This is everything that you, you see kind of reinforces um, that particular unique experience and sense of place. So with that said, um, we created a, a concept and, and hopefully you can see my cursor moving it around right now. Um, right down here on the south side would be the existing public road. And previously the roads kind of beat off immediately after that intersection so you know looking at things pragmatically what we wanted to accomplish what was lengthening that distance in which people can make their decisions so, so you enter the park you know you have time to to see the signage you have time to make the decision because you have two decisions essentially you have either you turn left and go to the historical area or you turn right to go to the recreation area. And so we want to make sure that that when you enter the park that you have the capacity to make that decision in a comfortable manner. And then to address kind of what Eric was saying, a little bit of traffic calming goes a long ways and and, and creating a slight little bend in this I think will will help slow people down and and as as vehicles enter, you know, even if even you're on autopilot, you'll start to turn and then, you know, you're, you'll go off autopilot and realize and you have enough distance to make those, those important reactions and slow down. Um, and then when you hit this T, you have the big wayfinding sign that tells you which way you want to go. Um, so starting back down in the south, you know, in addition to the wayfinding, we wanted to create a really, you know, in, you know, piece of architecture that, that a gateway that reinforces uh, that you're entering a park system and it reinforces that you're entering, you know, Scouts Rest Ranch. So that starts your experience as you walk, as you drive in. And then on the right hand side of the pathway, you know, I think there's opportunities to do something interesting, such as like bison sculptures. Or, or other, you know, maybe it's restored prairies that that kind of give that sense of history um, for the public. And then, you know, I, I, you know, me and my my family, we like to go to, you know, national parks around the the country. And you know, every everyone stops at the the, the main entrance, takes a photograph of some feature, whether it be the, the entrance signage or the bison. So we have, you know, just some small parking set aside to allow 
um, that function to happen. And then just some other pragmatic things, you know, screening and, and providing, you know, we have the superintendent's house there. We want to make sure they're comfortable with people driving in and out of, of the park. Um, but that's kind of the, the main entrance in a nutshell. The next slide I want to show is kind of, um, again, just a, an idea to get the ball rolling in terms of how we might address the large gateway on the south side. So as you enter the park, this will be your first your your, your first impression of, of the park as you, as you enter. And you know, while we were trying to figure out like how we do this, you know, something that that hit us over the head was this. You know, what makes this park really significant and what makes it significant for Buffalo Bill is is the architecture. His mansion there, his mansion is just an absolute jewel of, of architecture and so is the the barn and i have a little image of the barn on the lower right hand side um to us that like that's what really you know captures the essence of buffalo bill is the architecture so thought like okay let's bring the architecture into the gateway and use that um warden batten siding as kind of this identifiable uh element so creating a large gateway that you know it's big enough that you know you don't have to worry about semis or anything like that that spans the entrance but uses that that board and batten that red and white striping to make it readily identifiable as this is buffalo bill and then you know doing some elements such as wagon wheels and of course the the game and parks logo to help give some uh, identification and then because we're dealing with two separate parks you know identifying we have the state historical park and then we also have the state recreation area and i know there's some other ideas of, of using some of these the columns for additional signage um, we have some other imagery that i think you can find on um, the online platform but for this uh image i think this really captures kind of an an idea that that you know is grand in scale uh, captures that unique sense of place, the unique architecture, and then um, creates a readily identifiable park element so that you, when you drive underneath this, that you know that you're in a game and parks area. So um, I think that is all I have for, for this particular. Uh, I think going back to Skylar, transition. Yeah, there we go. Um, I could keep talking if you want, but no, you're good. You're good. I want to keep to the schedule. Thank you very much, you two, for introducing and giving a brief, a really good detailed description of the park entrance concept. Um, really appreciate that. Now, I believe we should have a poll come up from Aaron. Uh, it should pop up on your screen, and there should be three questions. You might have to scroll down, up or down, depending on how tall, wide you have your window pop up. And on your phones, you may have to press up or down or, or swipe up or down. Once you've, uh, we'll give you a couple minutes here to answer those polling questions that relate to the that entrance facade design and the entrance concept. Once we feel that we've given you enough time, uh, we will in the poll and show you the results.
Well, we'll just let this run for a little bit longer, but it does look like the entrance design does make sense to you all. And you're really enthusiastic, it, it appears, to have a themed entrance that reflects Buffalo Bill, Cody, and the Wild West and the wagon and, and whatnot. Um, and the, the type of insurance experience that you prefer is, is you really kind of want to see or do not kind of want that grandiose over the top Buffalo Bill grand experience for um, the entrance. And thank you for sharing that, Aaron. I was just talking through that. So yeah, it looks like you guys are really um, understand that you're getting direction of which direction you're going left or right, as opposed to just kind of going the why and as it is now, and and you want a themed historical look or feel about those directions and that information as you enter the park, and you do want that grand experience. Uh, the majority of you, you have a few that you know that, that experience is either neutral or just um, you just want to feel like you're entering the park. So our next concept is going to be related to the proposed future visitor center. Uh, presenting that will be Bill Stott, but Bob Hanover will be introducing this uh, particular concept. Bob? Thanks, Skylar. Um, my name is Bob Hanover. I'm Assistant Division Administrator with State Parks, and as was mentioned earlier, one of my responsibilities is to oversee our state historical park. So uh, Buffalo Bill is one of our best. It's a great park. It's very popular. Uh, for those of you who are um, not fully aware, earlier this year, um, uh, a portion of the historical park, uh, a little over eight acres, was designated as a National Historic Landmark. And we're very pleased about that. We held a nice little event there last weekend, in fact, to honor that. And we've got some of the folks who worked on that process here today. So we appreciate that very much. Uh, Gaiman Parks Commission has had a long history with uh, Buffalo Bill Ranch State Historical Park uh, since the 1960s. And uh, one of the things that we've done since the 1960s is we've utilized the mansion, the home of Buffalo Bill, kind of the core and the heart of this place. Um, as also everything else, uh, it's storage, it's, it's a service desk, it's a cash register, it's a gift shop. And in, in historic preservation and in good public education, sometimes it's better to have a different space to do some of those things. It gives that historic property a chance to rest, it gives you a chance to do a little preservation, and it, and it sets a setting, and it keeps the theme and the setting of the historic home as, as that. And so, you know, we have a need for storage at the park. We, we have a great need for artifact storage that are not on display for a workspace for that, for a customer service desk. Right now, people come into the mansion to buy their permit or um, to shop in a gift shop that's in a different room from where the cash register sits because of the layout of the, of the place, of the building. And it takes away some of that, that feel and that ambiance and that significance in our ability. Uh, there's other things we want to do. You know, I, I hear people say, well, you should do this or you shouldn't do this at Buffalo Bill uh, State Historical Park. And, and it's kind of fun for me to say, well, you know, this is Buffalo Bill's house. This is where he lived. If, if there's any place we have a little more flexibility to have some fun to try some things, it's Buffalo Bill Ranch. If Bill were here today in this meeting, oh, I, 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 really, I really believe that um, he would say, let's do this and let's do that and let's find all these fun things we can do and he'd find a way to make it happen. So we, we've kind of looked at those needs and looked at those opportunities. And, and, and we think that a visitor center would serve a lot of that, that a new visitor center would, would do that. And so it would be a space where we could have a, a, a nice lobby where we could have a customer service desk to serve those needs, a place where we could have an educational center, an educational room, uh, a place where we could um, uh, have a theater, a place where we could exhibit things, things like that. But we also look at, as a, at a visitor center as also an event or activity space. And so, for example, 
on the property, and, I, and I'll, I'll kind of back up a little bit here, on the property in Buffalo Bill's day, there was something that we refer to as the T-barn, a T-shaped barn that burned down long ago. So we got up this concept that we could potentially build a visitor center kind of in that location and in that shape to represent that barn that was once there. But we would offer all those things that a visitor center officer offers, education, office space, storage, gift shop. We would have an element in there also that would be for um, multi-use uh, that even the public could use as an event space for a wedding, for a uh, community organization, for a, uh, a, a work group to meet, to, to have an event, have an activity, and, and elements within that space that Bill will talk about in a few minutes. We really believe that uh, a lot, having a visitor center, or we believe that having a visitor center would allow us not only to provide these enhancements and these better opportunities at Buffalo Bill, but it would allow us to better preserve, enhance, and educate the mansion by not giving it double duty as or triple duty as many of the things in, in one of the one of the bunk rooms for the cowboys, we show movies instead. And so you really don't understand or the public really doesn't get a chance to see that this was a bunk room where a bunch of cowboys slept all night. Instead, it's a this little theater. So we, a visitor center is a very uh, functional uh, space for us that we can do many things uh, and it, it will serve the community as well. So I, I think that's something that's very important and we all agreed universally that this this has a real home at Buffalo Bill to enhance the park. So we have some ideas on how that might might come forward and I'll turn it over to Bill Stott to, to talk about that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for the opportunity to, to speak to you all tonight. I'm going to um, share my screen here. And um, I want to uh, want to start off with some of the basics. Um, as Bob said, we we really, I think we all gravitated towards this idea of of using the form of the T barn as as a visitor center. It 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 was an existing building. It was on the site, uh, but there's very little information. There's some old grainy photos showing it uh, off in the distance, and. While we thought the idea was really interesting, um, it was also problematic in that we don't really know what the building looked like. And it's it was a concern uh, to a lot of us to, to try to play like we were historians creating a structure that was amongst all of these real historical structures, the, the existing uh, barn, the existing residents that have history on them, and then uh, potentially putting a new structure on that might be confused with the original. So although we like the idea and the concept, uh, recreating the actual barn wasn't necessarily an idea that we thought was a good idea. And actually it's not even a possible idea since we don't really know how big it was, what the inside was like, what the functions were like. So it would have all been a little bit of make-believe. But the barn structure itself tended to lend itself really well to the organization that we looked at early on. So this is just a quick idea from, from uh, an overall of where it may sit on the property. Uh, and then we looked at a little bit of what the functions might be. And this actually reinforced the whole tea bar barn idea as well, because there are three major overarching uses of the building. There's the public space, the entry, which is the reception desk, the, the reference desk, gift shop, uh, the potential for some artifacts to be shown in here. It opens up uh, the ability to do things that are not being done on site right now, uh, but it's the face of the of of the park to visitors. The, the it's the handshake as they come in, and that's shown in the blue on the bottom. As we move to the back, there is this desire for we're calling it. It's named as an event center, but it's really a multifunction space potentially. These are all just ideas. That space could be used from everything from a, a small seminar room or a teaching facility. It could be a small space for a civic organization to meet. Uh, it could be a, a, a place where uh, people come and have the ability to view the cranes uh, in when it's inclement. They could be inside. Uh, 
um, those spaces uh, would then have the ability to be multifunctional and then potentially open up to the exterior somehow so that it, it blurred the line between what was inside and what was outside. So you weren't confined to 12 to 15 people uh, potentially for an event. Then in the pink is really the back of the house stuff, the stuff that nobody really thinks about or, or, or um, experiences when they go to a function like this, the offices, the, 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 the restrooms, storage, uh, pot potentially repair areas. Um, and, and that's to the right on the back in, in the pink. And then as we, as we um, looked at the building and started to place it, we realized, boy, a patio on the back would be really wonderful. And thought about it in terms of being able to close off that, that purple area and, and then use the patio and still come in and use the restrooms, for, ten, uh, for instance, but not have to worry about people going in and, and um, being in that entry space after hours. Uh, or, or they could be in the event center and have access to the restrooms and the patio uh, for a, an evening reception when the visitor center may be closed. So it lended itself to a fair amount of flexibility. So then we moved um, kind of into the three dimensions. And what our thought was, we wanted to recreate this form of the barn and, and, and pay respect to the old, um, the tea barn, but use that as a starting point for discussion about where maybe um, the existing tea barn is. We, we have some ideas where the foundations are. Maybe we use this as, as a, a jumping off point uh, to talk about the existing in relationship to the past. As you see in this image, the existing barn is off to the left, uh, but front and center, the, the new visitor center is a barn-like structure, but it's opened up and, and peeled away so that it's open and inviting um, to, to visitors as they come to the park. Uh, you see the whole glass uh, wall on the front uh, opens up to the rest of the park so that even as you're, you're moving around, uh, you see inside and you have the ability to blur this inside and outside. On the back then, we have that space echoed on the back as well with a small little uh, meeting area, uh, thinking that this space would be a great place to have, you know, maybe everything from cowboy poetry to a, a small little musical ensemble to uh, crane viewing. Honestly, the uh, um, I haven't yet been able to see it, but I'm told this is one of the best kept secrets in, in viewing cranes in the state um, with thousands and thousands of cranes um, visible from, from this space. As you see to the right, that, that right area is the, uh, the, to the right of the barn structure is the event area with lots of glass opening up to this, this space as well. Then, I wanted to reinforce that the thought is that this is a very transparent building. It's a, it's a structure that houses space, but it's very um, it's very multi-use uh, oriented. The space can be uh, reconfigured very easily, either seasonally or because an event comes through. Uh, but it opens up and welcomes visitors um, as much as possible, while still creating that really wonderful, beautiful barn-like structure as it moves through. And I was only supposed to show this many slides, but I had to throw this one in as well because I really love it. I think it's really beautiful. This is kind of a nighttime shot uh, as you're as you're coming in uh, from the the your your car. Uh, you see the barn in the back, and some of the things that Matt's going to be talking about uh, in the left, the the activity spaces with the little Conestoga wagon there. But um, we we think that we've kind of hit a sweet spot between referencing and and finding importance in history without cheapening it by creating almost a cartoon-like um, uh, um, solution. Like I said, we don't have any idea what the, what the actual tea barn is like. So anything that we did would be wrong. And we chose to go the absolute opposite. So a visitor coming would know in this, this area that has these really wonderful historical structures. This is not a historical structure, but it is of the same language and the same family of the rest of the structures. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Skylar and I thank you very much. Thank you very much for that introduction, Bob, and the wonderful detail and description of the, the, you know, that concept of the visitor center. That's that's some beautiful work that you've done, Bill. 
Um, and we should now be seeing the poll or a series of questions related to the visitor center concepts. Uh, there should be four questions related to the visitor center design and, and those concepts. We'll give you a few moments to answer those questions. And again, if you don't see those questions, all the four questions, feel free to uh, scroll up and down, especially those that are using a cell phone or a tablet. It will be in the poll in about 20 seconds. Okay, you know, at the visitor center, we're doing include event space. It looks like a lot of you, it's all over the board that, you know, what kind of events you would like to host, whether it's company outings, church outings, weddings, et cetera. Um, we'd like to hear more about that on, on our online workshop as, as long as well as um, it looks like at the bottom here, you have a good kind of mix, even though um, when it looks like the types of sandhill cranes, a question four of, of the experience you'd like to use, um, there's a lot of variety there. Um, when we look at how well you like the visitor center interior layout presented, uh, there, you guys either like it or love it, and it's okay. Um, feel free to provide some more input because there will be some more open ended questions to our online um, digital workshop. But when it came to the visitor center exterior, exterior that was presented to you, a majority of you either like it or love it. And uh, we'll definitely take this into consideration as part of our final design plan. So our third concept that we're gonna bring forth this evening for you to view and be presented to you by Adam Jones and, and or excuse me, introduced by Adam Jones and presented to you by Matt Schaefer is the overall master plan and associated natural playground concept. And the natural playground concept takes on an interesting theme. Um, Adam, go ahead and provide a brief introduction to the overall master plan. I can do that. And <clears throat> for those of you that forgot, I'm Adam. Um, so again, I wanna echo my appreciation for everybody attending. Um, as well as the team that worked on to develop these concepts. So a master plan is really important. It's very important, not only for the park, but for the community of North Platte um, and all of our visitors that come. So we have had many ideas on ways to add uh, to the park so our visitors' experience is enhanced. 
uh, and per perhaps more immersive into the idea and values of Buffalo Bill and the Wild West. So whether that's in the form of interpretation, different viewing experiences, artifact displays, or new ways to interact with all who visit, among others, um, we've chosen to speak on a small set of the concepts that we've um, talked about tonight. So although we're not focusing on the state recreation, for example, uh, today, we recognize it's important to the park as well. There are many ideas that we will be consolidating and discussing in the, at a future date. So that being said, uh, we're looking at ways to uh, better our partner, better our partnership with our concessionaire to increase his functionality, as well as the possibility to expand and increase his offerings, whatever form that may look like. So we're going to be moving into one of our concepts for the SRA, the State Recreation Area Campground, uh, in a couple minutes, and we'll give you an opportunity to comment and express your thoughts on that as well as everything else we're talking about tonight. So with that said, um, one of the last things we're gonna look at tonight is the natural playscape. I was lucky enough to be on the original uh, natural playscape team when we were thinking about adding this or uh, writing a booklet for the entire game and parks. Um, so we're looking to add one uh, natural playscape in proximity to the visitor center. So. A natural playscape, in essence, is an area that utilizes <clears throat> the land and the environment in our area, as well as showcasing ideas from uh, Bill's time. So in other words, <clears throat> it's an area with a Buffalo Bill theme, um, which Matt will go into more specifics in a few moments. So I really think this is an important aspect to be added, um, as it will allow, allow all age groups to immerse themselves into a long ago era. So with that, Matt, if you want to take them through what we've come up with thus far. Absolutely. Give me a second to share screens. Um, boy, I'm excited to talk about that, that playscape. Um, but first, let's, let's kind of talk about the overall view. So, so this image here kind of shows the park from a 2,000 foot level and, and kind of shows a little bit of what you've already seen. Um, but, you know, I think it's a good idea to kind of explain how we got to a lot of those things. So starting um, at the lower right, you could kind of see this is where the entrance is. So there's a road along the south side and then, you know, the, the road leading up from the south, coming up a little bend there. Hang a right, you go into the recreation area, you have this con concession air um located adjacent to the entrance as well but um hanging a left you know and, and a lot of this is just kind of pragmatic like what's what's the best way to circulate through through the site um so that was one of the big tasks and then you know figure out how we locate the visitor center and, and thinking through that and, and seeing you know that the t-barn used to be kind of in alignment with the existing barn and I thought like, okay, what, what, what would it look like if we not put the building on top of where the existing tea barn used to be, but in relative location. So that's where this siding came from is, is kind of not recreating its look on its location, but in its general proximity. And then, you know, when we discovered about this being a hidden, jewel of crane viewing is like holy cow like this is this is a great spot because not only are we kind of capturing a historical aspect but also viewing up from the north um into the crane it's like holy cow this is this is this is really exciting so you know then how do we get the circulation and so we we bend the road in we have a drop off here so um visitors can be dropped off and also if you're there for a daily pass um you could just stop there and, and get that but you know making sure that we have affordances for both vehicular and rv traffic because that's really important you know bill um can you know if if you ask him he'll tell you a lot about his travels with his his camper and trucks and his experiences and you know 
those experiences are really important to integrate into something like this. So making RV parking a central feature of the parking lot. And just for reference, the existing parking lot is right around here. So we're looking at, at removing that existing parking, kind of restoring it back into this kind of open lawn. And, and you know, that's, you know, reading through the, the historic landmark language, it's that, it's that landscape that really is, 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 important alongside um, the architecture. So so reconstructing as much of that as possible would be the key in opening that up to the public. So we have the visitor center. Oh, and, and for a little bit of frame of reference, this G here is the existing barn. H is the existing mansion. And then this is the pond and the stream that flows through it. Um, we'll be maintaining this little parking lot area because it's it's, great for accessibility as well as em employee parking but for the most part all of your all of your traveling inside of the park will start at this point and then whether you turn left into the historical area or right into the uh, recreation area um, so visitor center to the south here is that um, nature playscape and this forms a really great triangle of activity between um, you know, parking, you know, whether you've traveled some distance, you know, giving a, the kiddos an opportunity to burn off steam before heading into the historical um, aspects. And then, of course, after that, you know, they, they built up their energy. They get to burn it off again before getting back into the car and, and heading off to wherever um, the adventure may continue. So this is the playscape with um, picnic areas surrounding it. So there's plenty of uh, opportunity for people to, to activate and use the space surrounding the visitor center, but also keeping, you know, a, a, a good proximity from all the historical aspects so you can view all the great landscapes. And as I mentioned, you know, events are very important. So this M area here to the north of the barn, you know, is currently used by a lot of um, large gatherings, maintaining that that lawn area. With the proximity of the the event center within the visitor center so you know if you have a wedding or reception you know you can have your indoor it's directly adjacent to um the event lawn but at the same time you know there's a really nice kind of you know barrier separation so you could have events here but still not impede upon you know the daily activities of of, of the park so visitors can stop here and, and not be impeded if they want to go visit the the mansion. We're also looking at adding some kind of permanent um, structures. Now, just so clarification, the historical landmark area is bound in this area. So um, we basically really can't touch that area with any permanent structures. But up here, um, we all thought it would be a really nice addition to have some kind of amphitheater, some kind of uh, stage area uh, that can be utilized by some of the larger events. So having a permanent structure up in that little corner that's not intrusive upon the, the visual aspects of the historical district. And then to the east of the visitor center, you know, to really hit home that crane viewing opportunity is, you know, possibly looking at restoring this area as, as prairie or, or something, and then providing some nature trails through it with um, a viewing deck. So during crane, you know, there might be blinds, there might be educational opportunities, but it's like really, really reinforcing the importance of, of the crane. And again, having that nice separation. So this can be active to the public while this is possibly closed off for a private event. So really making sure that, you know, the park is multifunctional, you know, at the same time. Um, so that's the overall. Now, now let's, let's talk, uh, the playscapes, which, uh, is just a lot of, uh, ooh, I gotta, I gotta stop sharing and share a different PDF. So bear with me. There we go. All right. So we were tasked with finding, you know, some ideas for a nature playscape. And, you know, when we were talking with Eric and Adam, you know, trying to figure out like where their heads were at, you know, they 
they kind of said like, you know, wouldn't it be cool to do something with the, the, the Conestoga wagons, you know, the old big freight train wagons. And so, you know, okay, let, let's roll with that. So thinking through that, you know, the idea of a wagon train kind of came to the forefront, like, okay, let's use the wagon train as a central theme. You know, it's tied directly to Buffalo Bill. It's of the time. You know, he used wagons within his Wild West shows. So let's let's take that and, and run. And this idea of um, kind of two parallel wagon trains that have these pathways running through it um, came to the forefront with the uh, and these are just ideas, options, concepts to get the ball rolling. But on one side, you could have, you know, playscapes geared towards very young children. You know, it's very flat. It's very accessible. And then on one, the other side, you could introduce some greater challenge that would be more interesting for, you know, older children, adults, that kind of thing. So, for, you know, getting some topography in, in the mix. But using these wagon trains these wagons um, as interpretive elements, but also as play elements. So each one of these wagons, so these these little purple sort of rectangles would be the, the wagons, and each one of them could be fitted out with, with different um, programming elements, different activities, you know, whether it's telescopes or even educational items or, or slides or nets or, or something like each one could be programmed differently or programmed to be changed out, you know, the the possibilities are, are quite endless, but each one of these is basically a little room to be programmed out, connected um, by this trail. So like, for example, if you went up this, you would have this activity, you'd cross out of it and you'd climb up maybe six or seven feet up to this taller one that might have telescopes or something like that. And then with slides and net crossings, and then, you know, having this landscape that is planted with native prairie plants fitted out with all sorts of uh, nature materials, you know, stumps, logs, things that kids can climb on, be very physical with and explore. Um, and then, you know, blending, you know, con connecting these two sides would be this kind of central area with a, a sensory garden, a demonstration garden. The entrance could be uh, a Native American hoop garden. So now we're starting to introduce um, kind of kind of botanical, you know, interpretations from from the of the time of Buffalo Bill. And then on the south side, you know, I don't know if everyone's been on on, on a um, wagon trip. Oh my gosh, uh, there's dogs screaming in the background. But uh, you know, a campfire is central to you know the wagon train and, and instead of a campfire it's stacks of logs and, and branches and trees that create a natural playground element a natural you know jungle gym that you know kids can play in and build and construct on and then finally on the east end creating a buffer between the parking lot and the playscape would be restored prairies with um, pathways through and these pathways can be um, done in a way that are geared more towards children. So if you recall on the, the larger plan, there was the nature pathways for the crane viewing. Now those could be geared towards adults. This one could be geared, you know, the interpretation, interpretive elements, the activities within the nature path geared towards smaller children. Um, and then lining, ringing around the, the playscape would be, you know, the opportunities for, for picnic tables, benches, and other resting spots that you know you're traveling, you can have lunch there and let the kids burn steam off. But um, I think that's it for the playscapes. Very exciting. This this was a this this particular piece was a lot of fun to think through and and, and develop. So with that, I will stop sharing and hand it back to Skylar. Well, thank you, Adam, for the introduction and Matt for that great illustration that you provided us uh, for both the State Historical Park Master Plan and the Natural Playground concept. That's really interesting, and I think it's a lot of fun and fits the theme of Buffalo Bill. Um, we will now post uh, six questions for the overall State 
North Park Master Plan and Playscape concepts. The first four will include questions related to the overall master plan. And the last two will emphasize on the natural playscape. And we'll give you a couple of minutes to answer those questions. It will give you about 20 more seconds. And there we go. So it looks like, you know, with the overall state historical park master plan design concept is that you're, you know, that it would inspire you to visit the park more often is, is extremely likely or likely. Um, and when we look at the proposed roundabout drop off at the potential uh, visitor center, whether or not you like it, it's overwhelming, undisputably, everybody it seems to like, like that feature of the visitor center. Now, when it comes to you know, your concerns about access to the mansion, from the proposed parking lot, we're, we, we're kind of a little mixed there. And so I suggest that everybody that um, has some concerns about that to please go ahead and visit the digital workshop that will be posted in the next couple of business days uh, to express your concerns about um, those specifically. Uh, let's see, you know, when it comes to viewing live bison at the park, it seems like it's either very important or important for those of you attending this evening uh, with some that are moderately or slightly important. And so when it comes to the natural playscape theme and whether you like it or not, it seems like you're overwhelming like that idea. And so we'll more than likely incorporate and continue to incorporate that and consider that into our master plan for the state historic park. And it seems like you like that same proposed location of the natural playscape within the state, state historical park. So a lot of good input today. We thank you for that um, related to the master plan and the playscape concepts. So our final uh, concept for the evening is one uh, as a shooting sports complex that Nebraska Game of Parks Commission is currently looking at and exploring to add to the state recreation area. If you look in the map, um, it's just on the very southwest corner as you enter the park. And basically this is the only part of the area of the park that we can, or, or the state recreation area that we can build this structure. But to introduce and to present 
the shooting sports complex. I'll turn it over to Bob Hanover for more of those details. Thanks, Skylar. Um, I guess I want to say, first of all, you know, as I'm looking at the folks here today and the seemingly hundreds of Zoom meetings I've attended, I see the interesting blurred backgrounds and fake backgrounds and all that kind of stuff, but I have never seen anybody attend a Zoom meeting from a horse uh, until tonight. So Dusty, good job there. Uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's the first horse I've seen in a Zoom meeting. Um, so I want to talk, you know, Dusty's, uh, Dusty Trails is over there in the state recreation area, and you can see that on the map here. Uh, that's been a really popular activity there for the last probably five, six years now. And it's something that's it's been important in the state recreation area. I want to talk a little bit about what the state, state recreation area offers right now. Right now, um, we have a small campground over there that frankly, outside of some weekends and holidays, is relatively underutilized. Uh, you know, across town at Lake Maloney, it's a pretty busy place with the big lake there, but this campground is fairly quiet. It offers its own charm and its own opportunities there. There's some nice hiking trails or multi-use trails, I'll even call them. Uh, we have horseback ride going on in there. We have hiking going on there. Mountain bikers could get in there. There's some beautiful trail areas. There's also a nice little backwater off the Platte River where people kayak, fish, and enjoy some quiet area right there. Additionally, the Game and Parks Commission about two years ago and put a small archery range there in the state recreation area. So there's some really nice stuff in there, nice opportunities in there to recreate in kind of a relaxed atmosphere. There's some excellent crane viewing opportunities. Uh, a few years ago, we even made a, um, a mobile blind so we could move it uh, to we think more strategic locations during crane viewing season. So there's a lot of this stuff over there and I don't wanna short shrift the state recreation area. That's part of this whole consideration, part of this whole plan. We've been focusing a lot on the historical park, but this is a big element of it. One of the, one of the larger ideas and proposals that came forward was for a shooting range. I've been with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission for seven years now. And uh, those who work with me probably say it feels like 20. I get it. Um, but uh, even before I started, there was talk of a shooting range at Buffalo Bill or in the North Platte area. And that came uh, organically from the community, from within Game and Parks and other places to say, hey, there, there's an opportunity for something out there. And so uh, this proposal came forward to develop a, a shooting range there. And, and you know, a lot of people said, well, it's shooting, it's Buffalo Bill, it seems to be a natural marriage. So we, we decided that that idea deserved some exploration. So over the past few months, we've been looking at what utilities are there, what utilities would be needed. What's the impact on the horseback riding concession? What would be the impact on the state historical park? Uh, how would we direct traffic there? We've got a road that goes to the campground. What, what are we gonna do with that? There's some underground pipelines. This whole area to the, to the right of what you see depicted here is a floodplain. So there's a lot of factors that we really want to wrap our minds around as we consider this opportunity. You can see in the, this concept, and, and it is very conceptual, uh, you can see where the dusty trails area is. And those, though you may not remember exactly how it looks now, this reimagines a little bit about the parking lot and, and uh, maybe some of the layout of where the corrals are and that kind of stuff. But generally, uh, that's the same location, same opportunity there for people to see that up front. You know, um, in my mind, the ability to ride a horse on Buffalo Bill's Ranch is something, well, you can't do it anywhere else in the world. So this is a really great opportunity. And, and our concept of a shooting range doesn't really change that. It just maybe alters a little bit of the, the layout there. Then the shooting range itself would cause, you can see that black line there for that road to kind of, kind of turn a little bit to the right and go around the back of the shooting range um, instead of straight through like it does today. Yeah, just like that. Um, so the shooting range, then we said, if we do this, what might be available in this space? What might be something that would serve the community? And so we looked at the potential for an archery range, for an indoor air gun, for a small bore rifle range. Um, and and Skylar's highlighting those now. 
with the safety berms that are there and without impacting, you know, everything else that's in that area, uh, the cranes and the, the cattle on the ranch next door and all that kind of stuff. So those berms are there. And so that, that's kind of a concept that we could provide those opportunities to the community of North Platte. And the small range that's archery range that we put in the campground a couple of years ago is actually very well used, it's very popular. And so we, this has something to potential to be something people would, would enjoy and utilize. And so we further went on to say, well, how does this then marry up with, how does it uh, become part of the Buffalo Bill experience? And so we thought, well, maybe some of the building fronts could look like the Wild West show. Maybe we could put some interpretive uh, uh, panels and displays within these buildings or within this space. We, we wondered, you know, um, what if we had an occasional opportunity uh, for a show or a competition of some trick draw or trick shooting that the public could see and enjoy? Uh, would this fit with the Buffalo Bill theme? You know, um, we know that one of his uh, stars of the show was Annie Oakley, and there are many other women. Would, would, would displays like that encourage a broader audience of people to, to use and utilize and show this uh, or see this um, uh, space here. And so those are the kind of concepts that, that we are exploring, we're looking at, we wanted to visualize it with this concept here to see where that sits with the folks, you know, how does everyone feel about that? Does that enhance the, the state recreation area? Are we, are we thinking on a right path here? And uh, where, where should we go with this um, kind, of a, kind of an idea? And so I don't wanna get into all of the details here because there, there certainly nothing is decided, but wanted to share the concept that this shooting range because of floodplains and wetlands and cranes, this is the, if we do one, this would be the place it would have to sit. And so it would limit some of the um, possibilities that we could have, but it would also bring possibilities um, to, the, to the park as an overall whole. And I would mention too, there was a, a question earlier about what where the National Historic Landmark boundaries are, and Matt kind of addressed that. This or none of the other development that has been recommended would be within the National Historic, Historic Landmark boundary. And in fact, we, we have talked long and hard about making sure that anything we do serves to enhance that or not detract in any way from that. Uh, and maybe even gives that property a chance to rest a little bit by not using it for things that it, it doesn't need to be used for. So this is the shooting complex here. And I'm sure there'll be questions and comments about that. Um, but, but that's uh, generally the proposal and the research that we're doing. Where's the nearest water? Where's the nearest um, electricity? What would it take us to actually pull something like this off? That was a very good introduction and, and description of the sporting complex, Bob Hanover. Um, it brings a lot of opportunity to North Platte potentially, as this is just a concept. Uh, we will be asking one quick question related to the shooting sports complex, which is posted now. We'll give you a couple of minutes to go ahead and respond and make your choice. Be ending in about 20 seconds. Okay, now you should see the results and it looks like you guys pretty much overwhelmingly do support having some sort of thematic representative shooting complex that reflects the era of Buffalo Bill. 
And for those that didn't, I do suggest you continue to visit our digital workshop, which is the last part of our presentation this evening, <clears throat> which Miss Glenda Wood, our lead digital workshop content creator, will walk you through the tutorial about how to navigate the online digital workshop, which can be found uh, in the next couple business days, uh, just because we want to put these results up, can be found at outdoornebraska.gov slash buffalo bill ranch or outdoornebraska.gov slash buffalo bill SRA. Linda. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, let me get our screen up here. And I will take just a few moments to walk you through our digital workshop. And so we have designed this site really to be intuitive, easy to navigate, and there's really just a couple of concepts to keep in mind as you're viewing the website. Now up here at the top where you see the Game and Parks logo, when you are in any other documents or sections on this website, you can simply click on this logo and it will bring you back to the home page. I'm going to scroll down here and show you where we have created buttons, these red buttons that you will click into to take you into many of the same documents that you saw this evening uh, during this virtual meeting. Now, once you are in these documents, it's very easy to resize the document if you need to make it larger based on whatever device you may be viewing this from. You can zoom in or zoom out, and you can also page through all of the documents that are in each particular section. Now, once you are in these documents, what you are looking for are the blue icons posted typically on the left side of the document or maybe kind of interspersed on the actual uh, document itself. Once you click into these icons, it will take you into another area where we're going to ask you again, a series of questions that you can comment on. And we're really excited that using this platform, not only the people here on the virtual meeting will get a chance to provide input, but also anybody that visits the site simply can fill out these questions, hit submit at the bottom, and your responses will be recorded. Now you'll notice here that there is, you know, the security feature of I am not a robot, and you will see that on most every one of the comment uh, questions that we ask, and that's just one of the security features that come along with this platform. And to exit, you simply click the X right up here and it'll close out the document. You'll also notice most of these have a back button here at the top, which will again take you back to the home page and you can go in and out of these documents uh, and view them as often as you like. Here's another example of the overall concept we were talking about for the plan. This one is taking just a little bit to load. Um, but I would remind you, please be sure and view, scroll through all of the documents, because when there's several pages in here, there might be several icons for you to click on. And so here's just another example of one of those uh, comment forms that we're requesting input on. And I'll go back to the main page. And as you scroll down, you'll see down here, we also will be posting once the uh, video recording is available, we will post up the virtual presentation here so that people that didn't attend the meeting can also see the presentation. We also will be posting the results from the survey questions. So people who visit this site and weren't at the meeting will see the questions that were asked and the responses that were gained. And then we've also posted here kind of a timeline of the progress that this plan has gone through starting back in September 2019 up to uh, today. Here was the meeting. And then the final draft of the plan uh, will be submitted, <clears throat> presented to the commissioners at a later date. And lastly, down here at the bottom, we're also looking for any comments that you may have regarding our digital platform. This is a new tool that we have just started using here at Game and Parks uh, that we hope to use for many more opportunities of things. But we'd like to hear from you on just a couple of short questions, whether or not you found this site helpful or not. So I want to thank you for your time, uh, letting me show you a little bit about this uh, digital platform. And I'll send it back to Skylar to wrap up the meeting.
Thank you, Glenda, for that quick and, and dirty and well-informed at the same time uh, tutorial of the digital workshop. So you may be asking uh, where are our next steps? And basically, we're gonna take all the information that we gathered tonight, the questions that we asked you and the answers that we got from you, and hopefully you, you guys participate in the online digital workshop and hopefully others that did not attend this evening will also, or you guys can even invite more people to come to the digital workshop and provide their input. Uh, we'll take all that information and we'll put it into, um, take that for consideration and, and provide, hopefully help refine and uh, get at a little bit more detail of the development of the master plan and these conceptual designs. I thank you all for attending tonight's virt virtual public meeting. And again, there will be more opportunities for you to comment and provide your feedback on the workshop. Uh, this site will be up in the next couple of business days. And thank you again for your support of the Buffalo Bill Ranch uh, Park facilities and your support and feedback this evening. Have a great evening. That ends our meeting.